Ladies and gentlemen, today is September 17th, 2015, and this is the Kane Kale Show, episode 259, where we normally learn to be better artists, but today just so happens to be Thursday. And today what we're talking about, we're reflecting on the past today with my progress in art, right? Because, and the reason for this is because just recently, for those of you who follow me on DeviantArt, you'll notice, oh, whoa, I just uploaded the same thing that I did five years ago, right? Well, Kind of, I mean, I, I did a touch up, right? It's the touch up, 2015 edit. And the reason for this is because, a uh, little bit of story time, story time, uh, Blizzard is going to be, for those of you who play Heroes of the Storm, they're going to be releasing the StarCraft Medic as one of the playable characters. And they contacted me saying that they wanted to showcase my fan art. And I was like, wow, that's so cool. Man, after all these years, the Terran Medic girl still holds up, still holds up. And I looked, I was like, Ooh, and I like zoomed in on it. I was like, oh, this is like really like messy and like nasty. And I was like, do I really want them showing this like as a representation of who I am and my art? You know, so I thought, eh, well, let me just do a little experiment. Let me just paint over this. Let me do some paint overs. And eventually we got to this point here. Changed some things up with the face, fixed all like, just kind of cleaned up some edges. And, and it got me thinking, it got me thinking. I was like, hmm. Well, the date on this is 2010, right? 2010. And it just amazed me the amount of progress in the, like the changes that I went through as far as my style went and, and like all that stuff over just five years. Over just five years, we went from this to this, right? Just learning things. And so today what we're gonna be talking about is, I'm gonna be giving you guys, we're gonna be going way back in history. We're going way before 2010, try 10 more years, 10 more years. Back behind, we're gonna go back to 2001. And we're gonna be starting our story off with one of my very first digital art pieces. <gasps> wow, it's, well, for those of you who played Marvel vs. Capcom 2, it's Ruby Heart. Look at how amazing this is. Look at the resolution. Wow, we just zoom in on this. Wow, the detail is great. The pixelation, like I was into pixel art, as you could tell. No, I'm just kidding, I just saved this out terribly. And it's terribly compressed. You can see like the JPEG, like red and white lines on it, red and white pixels. But anyway. Uh, I'm going to be taking you guys through the story of the last 15 years. And what I've done is I've picked out many different, many different uh, things from each year, basically my favorite pieces from each year, to get to the point, right? We start from here, and then we get to something that is a little bit more noticeable or a little bit more uh, familiar as this. But then you ask, how do we get from this to this, right? How did I do that? What did I learn along the way? So I'm gonna be talking about that, telling you a couple stories and some things that I picked up. Uh, just kind of reflecting. Reflect on the past with me today, if you will. And so we're gonna start with Ruby Hart. We're gonna start with Ruby Hart. So, uh, back in, way the heck back in 2001, uh, I was really interested, like I was still just, I, I was a wee lad. I was a wee lad and I had nothing more than a pen and, or, or a pencil and paper, right? And I was just drawing stuff and I was just completely enamored and just completely obsessed with anime and animation and just that whole entire thing that went into there. Mostly because of the sexy babes, right? So we're gonna move into 2001, right? Learn all about anime. I'd be like, I know how to draw anime. It's super easy. Okay, all I gotta do is just do these really big eyes and then like a little triangle nose and the body is basically just like a normal person's body. It's really easy. Oh yeah, and don't forget the hair. It needs to stick off at least like 16 inches from their head and it needs to be all spiky and stuff, right? So needless to say, I was doing a lot of anime and most of my stuff, it was all it was all chicks. Like I, probably throughout my entire like portfolio, I have old portfolio, it's just like hundreds of like drawings in there. There's probably like two guys in there. It was like Strider, Hiryu, and I think like uh, Ryu from Street Fighter. And the rest are all like chicks and sexy ones too. Mm-hmm, you can tell. Um, this is uh, back when I was 13, mind you. I mean, don't don't judge. You know, you're 13, you probably drawing all kinds of stuff like this. I was exploring, okay? I was exploring. So anyway, so this is all 2001. 2001, drawing stuff with pen, or pencil and pen. But then one day my friend comes up to me and he says, Keenan, have you heard of this amazing program called Photoshop? It allows you, like basically you can scan your drawings in and you can start to color them. And that takes us all the way back to here, right? This is one of the first things that I ever scanned in, which is Ruby Heart, and then I started to color it in Photoshop. And bear in mind, I don't even know what the heck a tablet is. Like this thing, I, 
you, you could like tell me that there was a thing that you could draw on. I'd be like, oh yeah, I think I used one of those a long time ago. It's like, it like hooks up to your Super Nintendo, right? I'm talking about like Mario Paint. I was like, yeah, it was like really hard to draw with that thing. I was like, I had to draw, I had to put the pen down here and then look straight ahead at the screen. I don't know how I could ever do that. It just feels so weird, it feels so unnatural. So anyway, a lot of my first digital art pieces are going to be done with our good old mouse, good old mouse. So this is a scanned in uh, pencil drawing, moving into 2002, we jumped a whole year. Uh, some years we'll just have one piece, others will have multiple pieces if I really like the few of them. But this is basically me scanning in my pencils and now I'm beginning to color everything with the mouse. Like the way that I would do this is I would look like if I had to draw over top of this is I would have the lines obviously in front and then I think I'd set it to like a multiply. But basically this is me just like taking colors and I would always work with like the soft brush, right? So let's say I wanted to create that little shape right there with that hair. I would just like kind of like color it in like that and then I'd make shapes like that and then that is basically what creates the highlight in the hair. And uh, I think I masked, I don't know how the heck I did this, but I think like for those of you who do character masks, I would literally like go through and I would like manually mask. I think I used like a hard brush for that one. I would like manually mask everything out just by hand and using the mouse. And now she has an awesome beard, which I think is an improvement. Let's go ahead and save it that way. All right, moving on to 2003. Ah, now we're getting into some nice stuff, nice stuff. This is actually my original character shade, although you wouldn't be able to tell because she is literally just the most generic anime girl with black hair. Oh, but she has a pink stocking, don't forget that. So yeah, that is my character, don't steal it. Don't steal it, it's my character with a pink stocking. Um, but I was always really interested in, cause I was looking up all kinds of like anime pictures and stuff. And I was like, how the heck do they do the backgrounds? Like I'd have like these, these anime girls with like, and then it would have like, they'd be like on a couch or like in a living room or, or some sort of like building is in the background. And there's just like this perspective, like perfect perspective and sunsets and, and grass and all this stuff. And I was like, how do they do those backgrounds? Right. How do they do those backgrounds? So needless to say, I started playing around with perspective, I mean, you can see this amazing perspective over here on this uh, cabinet or drawer or whatever the heck this is. It's so bad, like looking at this is so bad. It's so painful in so many ways to look at this because I was learning so much. This bed looks okay though, this bed looks okay. But I think the problem here is that our vanishing point is like over there. It's like right, our, our horizon line is like right here. Oh, and by the way, this is a funny start. Um, I had a digital camera and I literally, like rather than draw a tree and like a house, what I did was I just took a picture with that digital camera. It was like a crappy little $50 picture. Like you literally could not see what you took a picture of until you hooked up a USB to it and transported the file like to your actual computer. So I did that. Oh, and look at the awesome lens flare. Hey, remember when you figured out how to do lens flares? There's a lens flare in there too. And I just, I put it on the background and then I just like put some stupid, I don't know, like filter on it to make it look all blurry and kind of painterly. And that was that, that was it for that. So yeah, that is outside of the complex that I used to live in. That's outside of the apartment complex I used to live in with my family way back when. Now we're moving into 2003. 2003, of course I had some sort of obsession with girls in night shirts and on beds. So of course, and look at that, working on that perspective right there. Oh yeah, still really horrendous, still really bad, but hey, it's better than it was before. 2003, although the nice thing that I can say is, even though this is kind of like a poor resolution uh, scan, uh, my line work was actually really nice. I mean, this is like really, really clean line art. Perfect for perfect for anime pictures that, like I was going for. All right, so 2003, next one. Okay, so I think this is, uh, this is also done with, this is also done with mouse and by hand, by hand and, and the mouse. And, but this one, I used the hard brush. I was like, hmm, maybe I wanna do like, like cell shading. So I started cell shading and I was like, okay, so this is how I cell shade. Okay, so it's like the main color, local color, right? Then shadow one, then shadow two, and then we'll have like lighter color, right? I use a lighter color as like a soft brush type, type thing. But, um, but yeah, I really like this one. I totally stole that off of Google. It probably gets sued by the person that originally created that. Whatever, we're gonna move on, 2004. 2004, okay, cool. So this marks a very important time in history. And this is when I finally started to understand obscuring things with atmosphere, obscuring things with atmosphere. I remember I looked at someone else's drawing on DeviantArt 
and they it was like some sort of like interior of like a like a cyber or like a futuristic ship right and then as things went further into the background i noticed that they just became shapes they just became shapes on top of like like a flat color and i was like huh that's really interesting i want to want to try doing that so uh of course for those of you who don't know this is a legacy of kane and soul reaver old school back in the ps1 ps2 days and i think this is right around when defiance came out and the background here like I tried to do that thing where it's like I paint like look at this it was like this insignia thing on the wall I don't know what it was I think I was looking at a screenshot from the game but I was drawing that in and then I took like the soft brush and then started to like obscure it with the atmosphere color and I was like whoa that's so amazing wow there's so much depth to this piece and there's like this this portal here that's like going to another world I think that was part of the game as well uh, and, and look at the detail. Look at the detail in this column to the left. Wow, it's amazing. Really great. So, of course, you could tell I was really proud of myself at this point. And look at this early particle work, too. I learned that I could start overpainting, painting on top of my lines, and getting all kinds of cool new um, textures and effects. Still didn't learn how to paint my lines yet, though. I didn't learn how to color my lines. And uh, that is still something that we have to learn. So moving on to 2005, moving on to 2005. Okay, so you can tell that I am very, very interested in wanting to figure out backgrounds because I was always very confident in my ability to create characters. But as far as perspective and backgrounds and atmosphere, and, and, and like the hardest thing for me to do was to put a character in say like a room or a hallway in this case and have it look like they weren't like a giant Oftentimes my characters look too big. They look like they were too big for the room that they were sitting in. So, uh, or walking in, in this case. And a good story, a cool story behind this one, is I originally created this for the first annual BlizzCon art contest. And because nobody knew what BlizzCon was back then, of course, nobody, nobody sent in anything, right? Otherwise, like, like luckily me and like three other people like submitted fan art and I won. I, I won, I think I, I think it was like first, second, third. I don't know what I got. Or maybe it was just an honorable mention. But regardless, I got tickets to go to this show for free out in Anaheim. And it was the first annual. It was so cool. It took me and my best friend, Jake. We had a great time. We were so broke at the time. We were actually, I was living out in California. So what we did was we got the tickets for free, right? We had just enough money to like eat out and stuff. Uh, but we ended up, I just took my mom's Jeep and we, and we put the seats down in the back and we just slept in the back of the Jeep in a Walmart parking lot or basically the equivalent of a Walmart. I forget what it was, some sort of supermarket uh, parking lot. And uh, yeah, it was a little bit, a little bit scary because there was like hobos like walking around. Like one of them, I remember one of them had like a pink hat on, like it was, but it wasn't just like a regular like trucker hat. It was like a pink construction hat. And I was like, I don't know where you would, actually get that but it was really interesting so um yeah lots of fun interesting people around anaheim at that time of the time of the night and uh yeah it was a really 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 fun time so um the only thing that i have to say about this one was uh, i was really happy with how this hydralisk turned out in the background with like the fire it was like yeah look it's all like silhouetted and amazing and, and granted like and like the the lights going off like the sirens and stuff like oh look i lit that part of the ceiling with the light so it's like whoa it's like realistic super realistic and like on the gun and everything but still my lines were still kind of sketchy and yeah they're okay i think i was barely starting to just understand i think i was using some color dodge in here i was starting to learn about cut layer styles and color dodge but keep in mind this is still with the mouse this is still with the mouse if you can believe it if you asked me to do this again with the mouse there was no way there's no way that i could do it I don't know how the heck, I mean, that's the power of determination right there, figuring it out. All right, and speaking of working with the mouse, this is the last thing that I ever did working with the mouse, I think. One of the last big, one of the last big pieces that I did working with the mouse. And this is known as Merlis's Quest, Merlis's Quest. It's still kind of a crappy resolution. I don't know where the high res is. Uh, but regardless, this was made for, I think this was for the second annual BlizzCon or some other art contest, right? And I got so excited, right? I sat down with my, with my buddy Jake and we're like, okay, I'm going to make like a, a murloc, right? It's going to be a murloc, but it's going to be like a custom murloc. It's going to be like a lionfish murloc and, and we'll like design this armor for him. He'll have like this conch shell on his arm and like, uh, rope, like, like I don't know, just like rope that you would tie up a boat with around his leg with like metal kind of like embellishments on top of it. And, and I even designed like his little trident dagger thingy 
and uh, and he's looking for like murky. I love one of the, my favorite things about any sort of paintings, but a lot of this happens in um, like Samwise Didier's work for Blizzard. Uh, a lot of his drawings and paintings have a lot of story in them. They're like hidden things in there, hidden things that you can see if you look closely. So I wanted to kind of mirror that. Uh, oh, and speaking of Samwise Didier, the previous year when I went to BlizzCon, the first annual, there was a panel, and sure enough, I got to go up and I got to meet him. He was like, like my my greatest idol, right? And I was like, please, Samwise, just just look. Look at my portfolio. Just look at it. And I had all like this, like, so like a lot of the stuff is still on my DeviantArt. If you guys go on my DeviantArt, it's all the old World of Warcraft stuff. If you go look at all that stuff. Because I was like, I want to work at Blizzard. I want to work with you guys, right? It was, and he's like, yeah, about that. <laughs> I was like, I'll give you some feedback on your portfolio. And, and so he gave me some feedback, told me to keep at it. So, of course, I took Samwise's advice and I did keep at it. So, yeah, that's basically the deal with this one. But yeah, I mean, I was actually, I'm still really, really happy with this one. In fact, I've had ideas about kind of going back. Ever since I did the Terran Medic, I was like, I wonder what it would be like to go back and like redo some of these pictures. I know a lot of people do that on DeviantArt. It's kind of like, it's kind of, I always saw it as kind of like eh, cheesy or kind of like uh, trendy, you know? And of course I'm a hipster, so I don't do any, if anybody else is doing it, I don't do it, right? Because I am completely original. All right, 2007, moving on. Oh, my love of comics is beginning to emerge. My love, although my hate of Comic Sans is Comic Sans, is beginning to emerge as well. Now, um, this was done for I think it was just for fun. I think I remember this is back in the World of Warcraft days when they had like lots of fan art and there was like people making comics, and I was submitting you know fan art too, and I got featured on their page a few times, but nobody was making or, or I hadn't made any comics yet, so I was like I really want to make a comic. So what I ended up doing is, you can see, I mean, if you look at this, like look how crappy these lines and like these panels are. I didn't use a ruler on this stuff. Like rulers are for, you know, suckers, man. I can draw straight lines. I can draw straight lines. So of course I put together this comic all by hand. It's like really, really sketchy. And these colors are just amazing as well. But, um, but it was really fun. It was fun learning about, you know, like uh, creating bubbles before you put in the words there, like leaving enough room in your drawing so that way you can you know, put things in there. Coming up with funny uh, lines that the characters can say. Interesting angles, like say like this night elf, like holding the pencil, like you wouldn't normally draw something like that. But it's starting to open up my eyes to the interesting angles and interesting things that you'll have to do when you start creating comics. You'll draw things from interesting angles. Basically, you have to be ready to draw anything from any angle at any time. So it's a very, very fun learning process. All right, so that wraps up 2007. Let's move on to 2008. 2008. Hey, I think you guys know what this is. I think you know what this is. It's Emma Sun. One of my first Emma Sun uh, pictures. It was actually just done as, a, see, this is like me. The, the zombie on the right is supposed to be me. And then the zombie on the left is supposed to be uh, one of my art buddies on DeviantArt. It goes by the name Saxon, I believe. Yeah, Saxon or, or Sachin, Sachsen. I don't know, whatever. I always say Saxon. So um, yeah, I did this just for a gift for him because he, he and I like go way back, go way, way back. We just do like art trades and it was really fun to just kind of see each other grow as artists. And I'm sure that you guys on DeviantArt, you probably have a similar thing where you, you watch uh, other artists or you even have a very close friend or a close friend like either in real life or online where you get, just kind of track each other's progress, track each other's progress, see how each other are doing every now and then, do art trades and this and that. So um, I was working on, oh, this is also gonna come in handy because um, at the time, this is when I started finally getting into I mean, finally, I, I, I consider getting into the industry pretty early for me because I actually didn't go to college. I went from high school, took about a year or two off to play World of Warcraft, of course. What else would I do in my time? And then, uh, but all the time, all that time I was drawing still. I moved up to Utah and then I began working for a company called Sandman Studios. And while I was there, I illustrated a book called Humbug. A Christmas Carol, which was this amazing, is a really, really cool story uh, that was written by my boss, Lee. And while I was working there, I ran into a coworker or one of my coworkers 
uh, he, he got hired after me. I was just a concept artist at first, right? I was just doing like little things for like this, like uh, kind of like this indie game that we were doing. It was called Nanovore. It was kind of like a Pokemon type thing. I was doing like little concept art for that, uh, rendering out sprites for that. And I know that sounds way cooler than it actually is. I wasn't like actually drawing the sprites. It was literally just like they had 3D models and I was just kind of like the in-between. I was the render monkey, right? So they just sent me all the animations. I would like render them out in After Effects and then like compress them into flat images, right? I wasn't actually drawing sprites. That's like way cooler than anything I ever did there. But well, until I did this, until I illustrated the book, I don't want to sound like it was actually like a boring time. It was an amazing time. And when I was working there, my coworker by the name of Andrew Young, amazing artist, taught me so much about lighting. He taught me about lighting and he taught me about um, like, just just like creating like photo effects, photo effects using blur, using filters, using all kinds of things that are at your disposal in Photoshop that I never really knew were there before. Or I was like, nah, I don't want to use that because like a good artist should be able to make this with a pencil, right? And it's just like, I was still kind of stubborn. I wasn't really wanting to use the things that were at my disposal, but he got me out of my shell, taught me so many amazing things. And the way that this plays into Humbug was because Originally, I was drawing up styles for the book because I, I was trusted with the illustrations for the entire book. So I had to design the look of the characters and I wanted it to be kind of anime influenced, kind of like American influence, like a mixture of the two maybe. Um, what we ended up going with was something way different than this. Um, and if you do want to see more of the humbug stuff, that also is on my DeviantArt as well if you want to see the rest of those illustrations. But I remember one of the sketches, I really wish that I had the original sketch, but it was just, um, it was basically like this. It was like a, a round, like acorn type head. And then it had little triangle eyes, it had triangle eyes. And I looked at it, I was like, that's actually really cool. That's really awesome. I wonder like, but it looked like, it still looked too anime, but I was like, I kind of like that style. I think I'm gonna totally, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take that and I'm just gonna run with it. So. We uh, finished that book, and meanwhile, I was starting to explore this style. And if we go back to the medic, right? Let's go back to the medic. Um, that style is basically what the original medic was done in. You can see the triangle eyes and the acorn head. So this was the beginnings of what would eventually become the style that I use for Emma and the comic. And just basically a lot of my stuff now I base upon that. Just a little bit of that. I like to put a little bit of like the hint of that in there. So. Um, Moving on from 2008, 2009. Okay, so there's Humbug. 2009 is also when I started to learn about drawing people. I started learning about the planes of the face. So this is some of my early, early, early stuff. So you can tell like I'm just really, I'm barely starting to grasp like the idea of like the cheekbones and like I really like, for some reason I really liked exaggerating this, this dimple underneath your nose uh, by your lips. And uh, I was just playing around with trying to learn how to draw people because I knew that that was something that I always wanted to do. I love drawing cartoons, but I wanted to expand my versatility to be able to draw more realistic things. Moving into 2010. Now, um, there's a few pieces that came between that one and this one, but you can see here with Sona that there's a lot more like, I'm starting to learn how to make my lines disappear. I think I was actually line coloring by this point. If not, then yeah, I was definitely line coloring. Maybe not as well as I do now, but uh, I was coloring my lines and I was beginning to paint them away. I was beginning to paint them away so that way I was now more relying on values and changes in color to tell, basically communicate the shape of my characters. And meanwhile, all the while I'm studying faces and everything. And luckily, Sona has hair that like covers like three fourths of her face. So that way I didn't have to put that much detail into the rest of it or draw the other eye for heaven's sake or, or heaven forbid I draw the other eye and have it look all wonky. But yeah, luckily her hair takes up all of her face. And so I stuck with that. And I really like Sona. Sona is always really cool. One of my favorite designs. And look at that. Look, we got a little bit of perspective going on in the background. How about that? That's lovely. I don't know where this is supposed to be. I guess it's supposed to be like Ionia or something. But anyway, this picture holds a dear place in my heart and it actually is a very important piece because this is one of the uh, major things. This is basically one of the things that Riot saw and got them interested in speaking to me. Now, um, during, the time, during this time, I was actually playing a lot of League of Legends and I just so happened to run into somebody who used to work at the company. Right, And I had sent off my resume, I had sent off my portfolio and everything, hoping to get a job there. 
And so, of course, I told him, I was like, hey, like, if you could, could you please, like, just put in a good word for me? Just tell him I submitted my portfolio, submitted my, uh, you know, my uh, my resume and all this. And, and here's the link. Like, take a look. I had made, like, a YouTube video. You can see the old YouTube video on, online as well. Uh, I made a YouTube video. I directed him there. And the guy that I spoke to apparently liked it. And apparently he did work at Riot before because it wasn't a couple weeks later I got a call from them saying that they were interested in giving me an art test. So let's go ahead and move on into, oh, let's move on into that art test. Now, what was that art test you might ask? Well, let me tell you, let me tell you right here. It was none other than the good old Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate was the first thing that they had me do. And uh, I, I would walk you guys through the process, but it would take like freaking forever. Just know that this is the first one that I ever did, the first splash that I ever did. And this was about the point that I really started to take major jumps, major, major jumps, going from this, right, to this. And just like looking at the, the detail in say like the, the metallics or like his shoulders and just like the rim lighting and the particles and the lighting over here like going on the side of his body there and then the blue light on the other side you know there's so many things that i learned in this piece and i i worked on this piece probably over the course of a month um working with one of the the original splash artists his name's wes over at riot and he directed me carefully directed me and had a lot of patience while i basically went from this because the first thing that i submitted looked like imagine a twisted fate like in this style it's kind of more cartoony like really vibrant colors wasn't quite doing it for him right but he taught me about controlling colors he taught me about controlling composition and creating all kinds of like like the like subtle gradation that happens like the darks and then it brings you to like high contrast and in the, in the head and the face and the chest which is where you want the viewer to look i didn't know what the heck that was i was like there's such a thing as a focal point you can control the minds of your viewers that is so cool right so i got really excited about that and over the next the course of the next couple of years i created more of the splash arts that you guys know and love you should all be familiar uh, lulu is one of still one of my favorites to this day love it love it love it yeah, and a lot of people still like this one. I appreciate that, uh, even though they did replace it, which is very sad. But hey, you can still see the regular one here. Uh, let me go ahead and take off my camera just for a second so that way I can talk over these. Uh, this one, not my finest moment, <laughs> but we were in a rush, so I did what I needed to do. <laughs> hey, there we go, Bunny Girl Ribbon. We all love Bunny Girl Ribbon. Um, and uh, Redeem, no, not Redeem Ribbon. Uh, this is Championship Ribbon. I forget where Redeemed Ribbon is in here. I don't think she is in here. Oh, bummer. Uh, that's still one of my favorite pieces to this day. And um, yeah, all these other ones. Some of these other splashes you guys might not know that I did. Like good old Executioner Mundo, uh, Firefox Ari, Annie, Old Janna, Cassidy. This one was really fun to do, like that Void Blade and like the background is like super blurred. Super blurred, didn't have to worry about any of that stuff. Old Monkey King. I don't know if they redid this one too. They, they totally should. I'm not. I, I like that hand, but that's about it. And Ninja Ramus, Scarnier, Swain, and this was one of the promotional images. I think they used at one of the gaming events, uh, one of the international gaming events. I forget which one it was though. So anyway, that rounds up the rest of the Riot stuff. There's a whole bunch of other ones that I did. Again, they're on my DVNR if you want to see the other one, uh, the other ones. But we got other things to go. We got other places to go because we're moving into 2012, baby. 2012. And that is Ari. Why is Ari there? Uh, <laughs> okay, well, whatever. Ari's here. Oh, there was a story that I wanted to tell about this one. I totally forgot it, though. I, I think just by this point, by, oh, I think Ari was one of the first female splashes that they had me do. And I, uh, besides, I think, I think I did Jenna and Annie before, but I was like, eh, those are like, okay. Those are okay. I was really like excited to do like a new champion, right? And we were developing Ari back in the day and I was sitting next to the, those of you who know Iron Stylist, I was there with him. Like we both got hired at the same time. Or actually, I think he got hired like a month before me, but I was sitting right next to him. And I remember the days when I'd show up to work and we'd just be chilling there. And we were thinking about like, there was a time when we were trying to figure out how her tails were gonna work. We're like, okay, are they gonna be like part of the dress? Like we, we had the idea that the dress would literally become the tails and, uh, or are they just gonna like come out of like something or like some sort of weird 
like vortex on the back of her, like just sprouts out like nine tails, which is eventually what we ended up doing. We just put a piece of cloth over it in a 3D model and hey, it takes care of it, right? You just hide it, just hide it. But for those of you who can look at the 3D model, you can see that it's just nine tails coming out of nothing. But um, we're just trying to figure out tons of things about Ari, like how, how should her face look? What's her what's her uh, tails gonna look like? What does the, the freaking ball look like? You know, oh, oh, and the most important thing is, is she gonna have ears or not? That was a big, big thing that we were trying to figure out with, um, I think we were launching this with Korea. And so, um, yeah, originally they wanted it to be like hair, like hair cones or something, like that, something that looked like ears, but not actual ears. Uh, but we always just kept going back to it. We kept coming back to the ears and we're like, we really like the ears. So I think we ended up like kind of going against what they wanted and we just like pushed it out anyway. But it ended up being like a huge success. People love the ears, I love the ears. And uh, it was just really fun to be a part of the company when such an iconic champion was coming together. And I got to be a part of creating an advertisement image for it. It was really, really cool. And it was a really cool time to meet uh, Michael Marino, Iron Stylist, back in his early beginnings, his humble beginnings at Riot. All right, now let's move on. Now that we're done with Riot, or now that we have finished with that story of Riot, for those of you who know, uh, back in 2000, at the end of 2011, I decided to quit and I decided that I was going to make my own thing. Remember way the heck back from 2008, was it? Was, was it this one? Yeah, look at that. We're coming full circle and we're moving on into 2012 and we're gonna be making our comic. We're gonna be making our comic. Something we've been dreaming about for years is now gonna be coming to life. So I started the comic in 2012 and uh, basically still going on it. I mean, I just released a new page a couple days ago. It's definitely gotten a lot slower than when I first started, but you know, it's like I'm making the dang thing and you know, I'm really happy with it. So, uh, but yeah, Emma was born, the comic was born and I couldn't be any happier. You know, balancing that, uh, working with Riot again, which also I'm gonna get into in a second, as well as just, you know, having time to do things that I want, like getting a lot more of my time back to do personal work, do the show do stuff like this. Really, really special to me. All right, so let's move on into 2013. Okay, um, so yeah, basically this is the year that I took off and I was living in California with my best friend Jake at his parents' place, which is basically like this huge, huge place. Like his parents are very wealthy and they have this really nice uh, house out in Valencia. So, and they were nice enough to let me stay there um, after, well, how did that go? I think I stayed there yeah, I moved out with Jake to an apartment and then eventually we moved back in with his parents, right? And I stayed there for quite a while. For those of you who've been watching The Daily for a while, you can see the, the room back then. It, like, it looked like a jungle room. It was really interesting. It was like leopard print carpet and I had like straw like interwoven through the, the walls and everything. It was really like awesome, like super well decorated. Um, and one of the coolest places I've ever stayed in. But um, during that time that I had off, I was working on the comic and uh, while I was back at Riot, before I took off, I had a chance to meet Alex Ahad, who is the creator of Skullgirls. You know, the, the indie, well, I don't know if you call it indie, it's, it's pretty big now, but a really cool 2D, like original 2D action fighter. And I just loved, I loved his characters. I loved his style. I told him way back then, I was like, please, Alex, if you have anything, if there's anything that I can do for you on your game, if you want any sort of uh, promo illustration, any sort of fan art, I don't care, just tell me, I will do it for free. I just want my name, I just want my art in your game, I want my name on it, just anything I can do, right? So um, during that time that I was taking off, he contacted me and said, hey Keenan, uh, we're getting ready to release the PC version of Skullgirls on Steam. And in that, we're asking a bunch of artists to contribute fan art, and I was like, oh, my time to shine, right? So of course I thought the first thing that came to my mind, we were doing a lot of World of Warcraft pool parties back then. I was like, hey, how about Skullgirls pool party? So I had a great time putting this one together and sending that off to the team over at uh, Lab Zero, I think is the name of the company that made Skullgirls. Anyway, moving on to 2013B. Okay, so now we've taken two years off. We've taken basically two years off. And at the end of 2013, I created this piece here. And right before I left Riot, I was actually working on something, basically kind of like unifying the Yordles, right? Because we have the male Yordles, which are like these fuzzy chipmunk things, and then we have the girl Yordles, who are like these blue Smurfs. And everybody who knows a lot about League of Legends history knows it's because 
the girl yordles were originally a completely different race named Meglings, and they were blue skinned. But then we just clumped them all together and said they're all yordles. But now we're just left with two strangely looking, you know, the genders are strangely different looking. So we were doing something called a yordle unification process. And you guys have started to see a little bit of that starting to come to light with the release of Tristana. So when I saw that, uh, or actually I think this was even before Tristana. Yeah, this was before the, the re-release of Tristana. I was just doing this for fun because I remember when I took off, I was like, I was really, really just passionate about doing, like introducing a new style to the Yordle, specifically the female one. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do some more fan art. I'm gonna do some more fan art of Poppy, right? Cause I feel like Poppy still doesn't get enough love. She's kind of like the abandoned puppy of League of Legends. Nobody wants to play her. A lot of people think she's kind of ugly or whatever. So I was like, I can make her cool. I can make her cool with what I was kind of studying towards the end of my working in-house with them. And I'm just gonna do some fan art, right? So I created this, posted it on the forums, and uh, it got a lot of attention from not only people on the forums, but also Riot again. And so they're like, hey, do you think that we could maybe like do something, set something up so that way you could do some contract work for us again? And I was like, oh, that would be so cool. Cause at this point I'm like, oh, I'm like so like deep in debt because I like took a couple of years off and I was like, I was living with my parents and I was like, oh man, I, I was like dreading the day that I was like, I think I might have to go back. I think I might have to get another job. You know, just, I don't know if this is the right thing to do, but working on contract and being able to still retain that freedom, being able to work from home and do what I love. I was like, yes, this is my plan. Or like, this is my chance, right? This is the plan that I've always wanted. And now I got a chance to take it. So of course I took it. And so 2013 moves into, um, I started doing some work on the skins and this is Winter Wonder Lulu. This is the, one of the first things that I did. Aside from, I also did uh, Skarner and Rammus. I think I did Skarner and Rammus. And then, but Winter Wonder Lulu was one of my favorites because I got to do like all the particles and just really went in depth with this one and had a really good time. This is the final thing, but there's, there's so many other pages that went into creating Winter Wonder Lulu. Maybe there's, I, I forget if I actually showed that. Maybe I should set that as another, I, I could set that as another milestone on Patreon, but first I need to check and make sure that I haven't already done that. But there's tons of other work and concepts that went into this. Moving on to 2014. Now I'm sorry, now I'm really excited because Marino, who was my supervisor at the time, uh, contacts me and he says, Keenan, we're getting ready to launch the visual update on Maokai. And he knew that Maokai was like one of my all time favorite champions. I love the monsters. Any sort of monster like Kogma, Urgot, Maokai, uh, Zack, any of those monster type champions, I absolutely love. But Maokai was by far my favorite. So when he told me that they were gonna be doing a visual update on Maokai, of course I jumped at the chance and I was super excited. I was like, I can get you exactly what you need. I can just make this awesome. I, I like do particles, I'll do like animations. And I was just like, my mind was just like exploding with all these ideas of what we could do for Maokai. And I was just having a great old time, great old time with that. And now we move into 2015. 2015, where I am back with my good old buddies. I feel like everything is now starting to kind of like simmer down. It feels like the, the work of 15 years is now starting to manifest. And now I've achieved this balance between doing what I love for work, doing what I love for you guys on the show, and actually having time to do something else, like having time to do my passion, do my personal work, do a comic, and just do other pictures. Do, you know, uh, go back and revisit, you know, the the medic, you know, that I just read it on that one. And um, yeah, it's basically, I feel like what I'm really starting to achieve now, or what I'm really starting to feel is a sense of balance. And I really like that feeling a lot. And I think that it's something that a lot of people are really trying to striving to achieve right with their art they want to do the big thing they want to do the big uh professional scene but then they they don't want to lose track of their personal stuff of their personal art and which i see so many people do it's so amazing like you get into the the industry once you get into the industry you ask anybody do you have time for your personal work anymore and so many people will say no and that's a big problem so Make sure that when you guys get all successful and you guys go out there and you start working for the big companies or if you're working for one right, right now, make sure you don't lose track of that. Don't lose track of the unique thing that you're gonna bring to the world. Don't lose track of the unique thing. Like you're drawing other people's characters, right? But don't forget to draw your own characters. Don't forget to bring your characters. Put them in the spotlight, all right? So the last thing that I wanna wrap up with today is where do we go from here? 
where are we going to go from here? And I guess, um, I mean, as cliche as it sounds, I guess time will tell. But the biggest thing that still is on my mind is that the just the jump in skill. Like when I was painting over this medic, just the amount that I've learned in the last five years, I want you guys to kind of take that and understand that the same thing is going to happen to you guys. You're going to look back on your artwork in five years and be like, whoa, like I can't believe that, you know, back then I thought this was amazing, right? And now I've learned so much and who knows, maybe five years from now, I'll look back on this and I'll be like, oh man, I thought this was really good, right? And then I'll like do another paint over, right? 2020 edit, 2025 edit, you know, but your skills, also here's the other thing is that your skills will exponentially grow. Your, your skills like exponentially grow over time. So just understand that first of all, it is gonna take time, everybody knows that. Uh, but second of all, just know that your skills will build exponentially. Like you're gonna, you're gonna be down, right? You're gonna be at 2001, right? So you're gonna be at 2001. Okay, then, you know, after seven years, you'll be 2008. Okay, then after another seven years, look at that, you go from that, then another seven years, you're, you're boom, you're, you're making splash out for Riot. You know, so just understand that it's just gonna ramp up and you gotta keep at it during the hard times. There's gonna be hard times. There's gonna be times where you don't know what the heck you're, you're doing. There's gonna be times where you're thrilled with what you're doing. You're gonna think it's the greatest thing in the world. Just understand that there is always a pattern, but if you know where you're going, if you know where you're going, you're gonna get there, all right? So I was just hoping to share that with you guys. Thank you guys for listening to my story. Sometimes I think I enjoy it more than anybody else, but I, I wanted to hear it again. It was kind of nice. Uh, I hope, if anything, this really shows you guys that a lot can happen in not only just 15 years, right? But a lot can happen in just five years, two years, even just one year crazy things can happen. It seems like every year that goes by, it's just like, I look back on the previous year, I'm like, I cannot believe the crap that happened last year. I cannot imagine what's gonna happen this year as far as you know where I'm gonna take my art, where I'm gonna take the show, and like the things that I can bring, right? The things that I can bring. And I want you guys to ask that same question to yourself. What are you gonna bring? What are the things that you can bring this year? What are the things that you're gonna bring you know, five years from now, 10 years from now? And I'm rambling now, so we're going to go ahead and end today's show. Thank you guys for joining me. I think this one kept, went kind of long, but I think you guys, have always, you guys always like the, the longer ones, even though I, I try to keep the Thoughtful Thursdays to a minimum just because, you know, but today was pretty fun. It was a good story time. So before we do go, I want to say thank you to my amazing sponsors, David Chiariello and Laura Bashir. Thank you for sponsoring the show. Thank you for helping me to do my passion to create this show for you guys all out there. Make sure to send a thank you to David and Laura in the comments, as well as you can check out their art in the description of YouTube. And with all that out of the way, guys, we're gonna go ahead and end today's show. Thank you guys once again. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. You guys have a great weekend. I'll see you on Tuesday, where we'll be getting back into Splatoonies. Splatoonies, and until then, you guys take care. See ya. Look at the little Emma son. Watch out for those zombies, little girl. They're gonna bite ya. Gonna bite ya. My legs are really sore. I need to kind of cut back on those squats, you know? Oh, getting a little squatty there. <laughs>